Um, you may remember the, the the very story, very tale about Rapunzel. Most of us remember something about it. Um, it's quite a, a horrific story. We need to go back over it again. How um, this peasant couple um, were living in a small little shack somewhere nearby um, the witch's domain, and uh, the um, the mother, the wife, got pregnant and. Um, she had this great desire to read something from the other side of the fence, which of course belonged to the witch. I forget exactly what it was, somebody you might know. Um, some special fruit, maybe it was garlic or something growing in the, uh, the witch's place. And uh, she, uh, she sent the husband over and reluctantly he, he snuck in a few times and stole and brought back to her. But one day he was caught by the witch. And uh, she struck up a deal with him that the baby that would ensue would be given over to her. And Julie, she took the baby away and uh, put it in this big tower, as you remember. And then as the, the child grew, her hair got long. And then eventually, when the witch would want to visit her, to feed her and so on, she would tell her, call to her, come to her, come to let down your hair. You remember this, don't you? And uh, then eventually, of course, the prince came along and he overheard the witch. And he, uh, being an opportunist, he, he tried the same thing and he got, he got to meet Rapunzel. But then, of course, the witch found out, and the story goes on like that. But at least just give you that back. It's a short poem, much shorter than the long introduction. I suppose just to say one last thing about it. Um, it's a little bit like is somebody waving or drowning, you know that idea? Rapunzel. She would let down her hair with her tears, most unladylike most out of the question. Just couldn't hold back when she was moved to raise her hands to her head and undo the knot. Tears tumbling in a sheer drop, making a splash, loud as you like, as you can bear. Hair in her eyes, strands blowing across her mouth, her face from a distance making faces. <laughs> um, I read this one for um, Anne and Barry, uh, who live in Carhini. It was written a while ago by Carhini and Kildaimo. It mightn't be famous enough to stand on its own word, <coughs> breath and super down. This is a kind of analogy really for both the way of life and perhaps for, um, for their uncle Jim. I suppose most people remember the cartina, it was written to a cartina here. <laughs> yeah, <I love> that. <laughs> so Carhini in September. In two parts. One. A ladder leans against the tree where yesterday Two boys removed an apple constellation, piece by piece, and didn't hear Jim coughing in the room. Now, without a breath, the clothesline loses heart, holding the wistful lives of sisters up to view. And in a misting field, the red cortina squats finished with distance and the late night stalling as busy hands go frisking in the dark. To let the view through the kitchen window be an apple tree, old enough to span two generations, writhing out of a knee-high mist. In its agony of branches, let the imp of Eden sit, doubled up with tummy pains at fruiting time. Of its wounds and windfalls, let it tell. Of the thief of trusting eyes, its wisdom close as breakfasting alone, missing a slowing footstep on the path. <laughs>